say there were 19 officers gathered in the hallway or somewhere. What efforts were made to try and break through to that door to say it was locked? What efforts were the officers making to try and break through either that door or another door to get inside that classroom? None at that time. The first call came in inside the classroom at 12.03 and you breached it at 12.51. How many students died in those 48 minutes? I don't have that answer. We're looking at it right now. Joining me now is Chris Swecker, former assistant FBI director in Ashton Pack. He's a retired sergeant for the Los Angeles Police Department. He was also one of the responders to the 2017 mass shooting at the Los Angeles uh, or Las Vegas concert. Chris, I want to start with you. Um, evidently, no efforts were made to open that door uh, early on in the process. And we have no idea how many lives could have been saved during that time. You're a professional. You study this. You've trained for this. What's your reaction? Yeah, I mean, a lot of things went wrong here right from the very beginning. The security at the school, you know, all kinds of different security flaws there. If they had their procedures in place, they sure, certainly didn't practice them. So, the, you know, that's the first line of defense. The response is a, is a different matter. Uh, you know, as, as we now know in, in listening to Steve McCraw, Colonel McCraw, do his press conference, as we now know, they gathered, you know, two officers went down outside the door, 19 officers gathered outside, and a decision was made to wait. Now, I, what we don't know is whether they were in touch with dispatch, you know, the 911 center, because if they were aware that these people from inside, the children were calling from inside that room, then there is absolutely no excuse. It should have been the charge of the light brigade. They should have just kept on going until they neutralized that shooter because you know there are survivors inside and he's still in there and with sporadic shooting. So, you know, I, you hate to make harsh judgments, but I think Steve McCraw laid it on the line today. I, you know, I, I know him and I, I, he has great integrity. Note also that DPS was not the responding agency. They are the investigating agency. So they only, you know, they took what they were told and then uh, ran with that for a couple of days. I think finally, after two days, the truth comes out. So. Yeah, a lot of things went wrong here, but clearly uh, they should have gone in. Sergeant Pack, you've, you've had a, a long career. Uh, you studied and looked at these things. This is one of the most horrific shootings we've ever had in this country. But as you see it unfolding and the limited information that you have, what's your reaction? Well, uh, thank you for having me. And I agree with the special agent. And, and honestly, I want everyone to look at this through two lenses. Don't paint all law enforcement with a broad brush right now. There are heroes in that community, heroes in that police department who, who rushed to gunfire and rushed in to try and save lives. Now, I think ultimately what we need to find out is what were, what was the ideas and the thoughts behind the decision of the incident commander at, on the scene to treat this as a hostage situation. It, it, it's best practices in our country and, and we train in law enforcement and I trained when I was a police officer, my, uh, the officers under my purview, that anyone who's showing homicidal intent, especially on the hallowed ground that are our schools here in this country and our children being our most precious resource that we have, we have to rush in and we have to assume that deadly force may be warranted. We can't treat this as a hostage situation. He was showing murderous intent it was very evident from the shots he fired at the two folks who were working at, I believe, a cemetery or a funeral home. There was a collapse, a breakdown of, of this school being secured and leaving a door open. It, how heartbreaking that is. It's something we've all done. But as school employees, people who are trained and to safeguard our children, this is something that we absolutely have to think about of just but a simple act of locking a door and having the entire campus on a lockdown, yeah. the minute anything blips that radar outside, that, that could be an armed assailant. Uh, it, Chris, I mean, obviously, uh, the communication will be something they can go back and they'll have, uh, you know, some forensics on that. And, and, and the ability to communicate with 19 officers inside, which was new information, which we didn't hear before. Um, and the idea that a teacher left the door open and there is a school lockdown in place, I, I, I mean, at what point do you just say, my goodness, we, this could have been prevented? Yeah, it was preventable. I mean, I, I do school security assessments, and I see this a lot, where 
you know, they, they understand the rules. They're on the books. The protocols are there. They're in a book sitting to gathering dust on the corner of the desk. But nobody actually puts them in practice. And you see time and time again that, that teachers will prop doors open. And it, all I can say is you, you have to trust but verify in this situation. Someone has to come around and, and do a periodic assessment of the school security. I think there's only a middle school, a high school, and an elementary school in the county. And I don't think it's a whole lot to ask that someone come around periodically and do a third party assessment to make sure that they're following their own protocols. Because it was in the books to keep everything locked, one point of entry during school hours, how to lock things down when there's trouble, how to communicate the lockdown, which is always the problem. How do you communicate the lockdown? Yeah. One teacher knows to do it, but how do you get everybody knowing what to do? So I, you know, I, I can't tell you how many breakdowns there were on the front end of this. Now law enforcement's got to come well, in and clean listen. up the mess. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.